Don't forget to click the subscribe button, comment down below, like this video, and click the bell icon to be notified. Good morning. I'm going Duncan. <laughs> Mostly because I want to have a happy day. Victoria doesn't have school today. She does school from home one day a week. So her dad's home sleeping and I said, careful please. She said, no. I said, what if I bring your lunch back? Hey, okay. so I didn't bring your lunch. <sighs> Oh, you guys, my Hashimoto's kicked up really bad last night. So, from this part of my pinky finger to this part of my wrist feels like it's on fire. My skin feels like it's on fire. That's one of the reasons I want to go have a good day. Because it's just, I can't work when my skin starts doing this. And if this hand's doing it, the chances of it starting elsewhere is going to be good. I need to calm down. That's what I need to do. I need to be not stressed today. So I'm not joking because that doesn't stress me out. It makes me happy. So I'm going to go do my happy thing. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to start my own business is because I can work around my Hashimoto's flares. And today it's flaring up. My skin feels like it's on fire. So I'm going to go to my favorite thrift store in Cambridge. Three minutes early. There's a couple other people waiting too. So we're all waiting to get in. People are milling about in there getting ready for us to come in and blow the doors off this place. <laughs> Worth it. Worth the drive. Okay, I have to go hang out at the thrift store because this store don't open till 11. Why is your store dying? Hmm. I don't want to hang out till 11. It's 10.15. I got 45 minutes to kill in the thrift store. kill time in but okay we're gonna do it oh boy <laughs> I got a couple things I'm having a hot flash like really bad and she's taking her time wrapping stuff and I'm just like melting who's ready for a thrift haul I'm always ready for a thrift haul I'm gonna start at the second thrift store I went to um, before you know not my, my, not my favorite one, but it's a good one. Um, 54 inches, two yards of this fabric. So it's a tall, but it's a COVID tall. Be careful. Um, it's a quilted tall. It's got the country tall pattern on it. So little farmsteads and people having picnics and stuff. Tall is always good. Um, 12 cycles through colors, but pretty much it's always there. It's like a classic pattern. Why do I feel like I'm way low in this chair? Hang on. That's better. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am a hobbit. Okay. Anyway, but, um, 12 is always good to have. So I have, um, the blue and white, a red and white, a yellow and red, and now I have the cream and red. It's kind of a cream and a burgundy. I don't know what I'm going to put it on yet, but it'll go in the stash, the fabric stash. So something will speak to me and it will need it. But you can see it's got like a quilted texture on that. Next. This is what she was wrapping while I was having a hot flash. And I'm like, just make it fast. Just let's do it. This is kind of a stupid one. It's an iridescent champagne glass. And I kind of wanted to use it for a craft um, to put like the little Christmas trees in. The bottle brush trees at Christmas time. So I had seen somebody do just this adorable little vignette inside one of these iridescent glasses. And you can see it's got the kind of the rainbow iridescence to it. And since nobody really drinks champagne out of these anymore... I feel like it's never going to be used for its intended purpose. <laughs> so I wanted to kind of do like a little Christmas vignette in it, I think. So it's going to be added to the craft stash. Just what I need, right? More crafts. We'll see. Maybe I'll drink out of it first. Blue and blue enamelware. Love enamelware. Enamelware sells. This one's fairly clean, too. Makes that all burnt. A lot of times on the inside, they'll be burnt. Tiny little chip there. There's not, it's not bad. 
not rusted, but it's blue and blue. Uh, the speckled granite wear, that's what it is. Granite and granite wear, enamel wear. It was six fifty. I'll make a profit on that. I'm not sure what I'm going to charge for it yet. An old potato masher. I'm actually going to make this into a recipe card holder. I'm going to drill a clip onto here and make it a recipe card holder to sell. Just a quick little upcycle for that. It obviously cannot be used as a potato masher any longer. Somebody like went to town on it too. Check that out. It's not even standing upright anymore. It's like, <laughs> I know very little about this piece. This is another one of those. Mm, I think I'll try it. It's made in England. It says American Heritage Millennium Collection, dishwasher and microwave safe. So it's not as old as I would like it to be, but it's got Grant and Lee in the Civil War signing the treaty, I'm guessing, the, the surrender. I don't know. I know very, very little about this, so I'm going to have to look it up. If worse comes to worse, it'll be cute with flowers in it. You know, they had it on their blue tag, which is antiques. This is not an antique. It's not an antique. It's, they have dishwashers at the point where it was antique or microwaves. So if it says microwave and dishwasher safe, you can be guaranteed it's not an antique. Just saying. I don't know who's pricing their stuff, but just because it's got Grant and Lee on it doesn't make it an antique. And then I got this. It's blue. It has condition issues. It was $6.50. It's a music box. And I think it's got a, I think it's a powder holder, right? Let's hope my brain still works. Oh, oh, she's playing. Yeah, it would have been a powder holder. Put your little powder puff in there. So, um, some of the little beading has come off the top, but they sure don't make them like they used to, do they? one of the first things I picked up. I was so excited. It's $6. And it is a fluted lamp, obviously. It's probably from the 1930s, I would guesstimate. I don't really know. There's no um, provenance or uh, details on there. I mean, it's, I would guess it's the 1930s based on the style. Kind of that sleek line deco look. Um, just needs a really great glam shade and it's just who would get rid of this look at it this is just pure gorgeousness i may keep this in my base <laughs> oh i'm redoing my living room i'm gonna redo my living room i think i'm gonna keep her yeah i think i think she's staying with me now I'm just going to need a really great lampshade. It's beautiful. Just beautiful. So it was totally worth taking a break today and going junk in because if I had gone in and just started working, I don't think this would be going away by lunch. You know what I mean? You can actually see like a little red mark there where it still hurts. Just my body attacking itself. No problem. This is everything else I got. It's <laughs> on the floor. Okay. First, bark cloth curtain. So it's a paisley bark cloth. And the only reason I got it was bark cloth. I rarely ever find bark cloth. And I swear to you, I swear. I just said, I was at Pickett and I was talking to one of the other vendors. And I said, I never find bark cloth. The gods of junk and provide. So I got bark cloth and it was only $2 for this curtain panel, 80 by 60 or two bucks. And I was looking at bark cloth at a vintage place and they wanted $50 for just like this tiny little square. And I went, oh, I don't want bark cloth that bad. But bark cloth comes from its texture, obviously. If you're watching this and you do vintage stuff, you already know that. 
So this is for everybody who just didn't, who assembled upon me and went, what the heck is that bark cloth? My sister, who's a sewer, didn't know what bark cloth was. And I'm like, well, it's a thing. $9. It's all wooden spools, all different eras of wooden spools. So I was kind of looking at it going, and do I want to pay $9 for it? Do I not want to pay $9 for it? And I finally convinced myself I would because wooden spools always sell. There are people that collect them to build cabinets, to build shelves, the spool shelves. Um, they're still doing it. Some people are still doing it. So there are people that are still looking for these wooden spools. And I now have an entire jar full. I have some in a drawer too. I have like 10 in a drawer. And I just keep thinking, I'm going to bundle them up and sell them all together. Well, now I don't have an excuse. <laughs> now I have a lot. <laughs> um, cake topper. So cake plate topper. Didn't have the plate. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. These aluminum ones, these like 40, 1940s, 50s aluminum style cake toppers, people buy them and then they put them on their own. Like... You make the pedestal with the wooden plate and then you have this put over the top. Ooh, pretty. I sold so many of these and then I have one that has the plate. They don't want it. <laughs> they just want to buy the top. And I'm like, no, you can't have just the top. I, that's a set. This was a dollar. So for this, uh, they can just have the top. It was a dollar. It's awesome. It's in perfect condition. Um, I bought these because I don't need them. It makes sense in my head. I don't need them right now. Let's put it that way. So these are the backs for knobs. And I had a situation, I want to say during the 100 Project 100 Days, I was putting together something and I kept thinking, I wish I had one of these. Well, I have now a bag of them. And I can paint these any color I want. I can, you know, they're they're fairly plain. Nothing too extraordinary or extravagant. And uh, yeah, <laughs> just to put behind a knob. I don't even remember what the situation was, but I remember being frustrated that I didn't have one of these. So now I have a bag full of them and I can customize them any way I want. So that'll go in my hardware stash. I have a hardware sash guy. Um, these will sell old plant hooks and brackets for 50 cents a piece. So people like that they're rusty and old. I put new ones out and they don't want those. New ones that were shiny black and they want it to look old. So there you go. Looks old because it is. Okay. Then you guys remember I bought that. Um, if you've been watching for a while, the off clip on refills <laughs> for a buck. I have refills, but you know, it's a buck. Federalist Ironstone. I had this in the lemon yellow and I believe it's sold already, but it's Johnson Brother. No, oh, Harmony House Federalist Ironstone made in England. Now this one's made in Japan. It's oven and detergent proof. Not microwavable. And dishwasher safe. So this one has some light crazing on it. Uh, so you can see the crazing right there. So there's some light crazing on it. It wasn't too bad, but it's it's a nice white iron stone for two bucks. And there's no chips, really, just that crazing, and there's no crazing inside. So I picked it up. Oh, Minnesota Wild, the great smug. So uh, I have a hockey basement and I keep finding these mugs. These are, they were giveaways at the game and they had uh, Marion Gabrick, uh, Coach Lemaire, Nicholas Backstrom, and I think Brent Burns was the last one and this is Brent Burns. So I have all the other ones. Okay, so for those of you who've been watching for a while, you remember the, uh, sh the, I think it was last month when I broke all that China? Well, I did take it home because I figured I could do a mosaic out of it. 
So this is a brand new mosaic tile nippers for $4. And I bought it because I don't have any. I don't have tile cutters or nippers. And I figured if I need to take the sharp edges off, there you go. So I have all that porcelain and stuff that I broke. I'm going to try and turn it into something. This Cole Porter 45. It's a Cole Porter 45. And mostly I got it for the artwork. And the fact that it's from Woolworth and Co. for 79 cents. It was 50 cents when I bought it. But look at the art. And then inside is not actually Cole Porter. Well, I should have probably looked at that. Twas the night before Christmas. <laughs> Decca Records. And uh, it came upon a midnight clear. So I got Christmas music inside of it. And so it's a good thing I bought this for the artwork because it's not actually what's in there. Ah. But I did. I bought it. Simply for this cover. Kind of has to be art at this point. I think this is the last thing. Nope. There's something behind me. Milk glass. Um, it's just... A base it's a smaller base so I find the taller vases a lot and a lot of times I'll find it with the hobnail on it and this one had the pressed glass textured piece I want to get a bunch of these I find them all the time for 50 cents this one was a dollar I find them at garage sales I want to do a display of them because I think they're super pretty I don't know why I find these really peaceful and charming. I mean, my grandma had them. My mom had them. I think everybody I've ever known has had the, the milk glass vases, right? I, I didn't even have mine still. I find them really charming. I find them really peaceful looking and I kind of wanted to get like different sizes and do a little vignette on my buffet. And this is one of the smaller ones that I've seen because normally they're like, here's a water bottle so you can see the size. Cause they're normally like the super tall ones and this was a smaller one for a buck i'm like yeah somebody nail polished the bottom of it i don't know why why would you want to paint this don't make me do a diy fix again <laughs> last but not least is this piano bench back here so this is just a standard size piano bench and um benches sell so i just finished my old piano bench which is taller than that one um, I'm going to quickly paint this one up. I'm probably just going to give it a quick spray paint. It's a mid-century piano bench. There's nothing special about it with a black vinyl seat. The seat's torn. It was five bucks. So I'm going to give it a quick spray paint of the legs. I'm going to paint it white and throw some fabric on it. Oh, maybe I'll put some twelve on it. There you go. Twelve. Um, maybe. Although I got kind of a floral fetish happening at the moment so they'll probably get flowers but that's everything so i'm glad i went junk and i'm feeling better and hopefully the spot it's just a little spot now but that would have been all down here it's not hurting as bad so i can kind of get back to work now um like i said it's nice to be self-employed so that the days that it hurts you can kind of go go do something else for a minute. And this is still part of my job because I have to find inventory. So I don't feel guilty at all when I need to take those times and just go junk in, even though it is kind of my happy place. But being in my shop is my happy place too. I love being in here and painting. But right now, no painting. I have to go and figure out what to pack for uh, the booth for Picket, the big booth. I'm going tomorrow to work on the big booth. So actually this blue desk that's behind me, I need to get the hardware on it and get it out the door. And unfortunately the lock plates are probably not gonna be here until it's actually almost time to open the store. According to Amazon, the 29th, which is tomorrow. Eh, maybe it's like a photo finish, but it could be anywhere from now until the 4th and we open on the 5th. And usually, please be here tomorrow. Please be here tomorrow. Because then on Friday, I can get those, um, the lock hardware put on. So what I'm looking for is 
I ordered two new ones of these, the lock plates, because I wanted them to match. And I didn't find one exactly like that with the rope detail around the oval. So I bought two brand new ones and I want to get them on there and I need to get the knobs on there and get it loaded in the car and ready for tomorrow. I got to go to pick it. And I think I'm going to take that green laundry basket too. Cause I have to, I have to take a lot out this month. Anyway, I better go figure it out. Visit my blog, peonylanedesigns.com, for more tips, tricks, and inspiration. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon so you'll be notified of new videos. I post every week DIY tutorials and, of course, more Junkin' videos.